So we're gonna put Benjamin Moore Scuff X to the test. Is this a product you should buy or use? Stay tuned for this video. We put it to the test. I've heard a lot about it on my social media, people using it anywhere from walls to cabinets. I am Christy Idaho Painter and this is Paint Life TV. And we're gonna let you know if this is a product right here on this video that you should purchase and use and what we think of it. So stay, stay, so stay tuned for this video. All right, here we go. Our Scuff X review. Scuff X is a product by Benjamin Moore. It's ultra spec Scuff X. It's a scuff resistant interior latex coating. It's a one component uh, coating and it's scuff resistant designed for um, high traffic areas and it is extremely durable. I chose matte. I used the matte finished, used it in this dark navy color and we really put it to the test. There's a lot of things I'm looking for as a professional painter, how it performs as a professional painter and then once it dries, you know, how it performs after that. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the specs of the product and what it is supposed to do and then and then what I thought of it and how it performed out on the job site will give you a little bit of a look what it um, looked like actually applying it. I probably had the, the most difficult scenario you could possibly run into when it comes to painting a dark navy color, which um, you could easily run into haloing, flashing, lap marks. And um, so we really took a product that, um, you know, if something's gonna fail, um, if you're gonna get splatters, if you're gonna get haloing, uh, you know, just about any paint would do that. So you're gonna have to have a really high end paint that's gonna perform really well, especially using a dark color like that. So, you know, let's get on with some of the specs of the product and we'll talk kind of a little bit about it. All right, so I'm gonna refer just a little bit to my notes. So, um, cause there's a, a lot of things about um, Scuff X that I wanna bring up here. It's a proprietary scuff resistant formula. It's a single component formula. And I'm gonna go back and talk a little bit about each one of these components, but I'm just gonna list them out. It's washable, it's quick dry, it touches up, it's spatter or splatter resistant, it's easy um, application or easy to apply, antimicrobial additives it does have in it, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that, and it does have Gen X technology. Those are some of the key points we're gonna be talking about in this video. I'm gonna go over each one of them. All right, so the first thing I wanna go over is it is a proprietary product by Benjamin Moore, and it is, once again, called Scuff X, and the name itself kind of says what it is. It resists scuffs. So it's designed for high traffic areas. It could be in hallways, uh, gymnasiums, locker rooms, stuff like that, where you have high traffic area, areas where you could get uh, scuffs, um, hallways and, and hotels and stuff like that. Uh, people's feet can scuff things, um, luggage can scuff it, balls can be hitting the walls, um, basketballs, footballs, stuff like that. Anywhere where uh, scuff resistance is necessary, this is a proprietary product by Benjamin Moore and it once again, it is scuff resistant. The next thing I want to talk about is it is washable. So I, I used a matte finish and this is a washable uh, matte finish. And if you do get scuffs on the market, it is scuff resistant. But if it gets, if it, if you do get a scuff on the wall, it is washable and scrubbable. So you can actually take um, soap and water and clean off marks on the walls. So you don't have a lot of paints that are washable or scrubbable and especially in flat or matte finishes. So you can take and if a mark is on the wall, you you can wash it off with soap and water fairly easily. Another thing I want to talk about is this is a single component product and what is single component? Single component means um, you just can use it right out of the can. When it comes to high traffic areas and, and using products that are scuff resistant or uh, mark resistant or washable, you can use, and I've used in the past, single component epoxies or two-part epoxies. And um, this is a single component product, which is easy to use. I, I mentioned a little bit, it's the application process. It's easy to component products are you've got to mix two components together you got to take um, the color and then the hardener mix them together and then you apply them so you have sweat times and then once it's um, mixed two component you can't reuse the product once the pot life ends this is a single component product that can be used out of the can you can close the can and then go back and use what's in the can later on to do touch up so it's single component and very easy to use another thing is is um, I want to talk about is it's uh, touch 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 up ability. So this is a product, a matte finish, and I'm going to get into talking about when I was actually applying and stuff like that and how it applied, but this does touch up and it's a product, a matte finish, 
in a dark color that we actually use, it does touch up and touches up well. A lot of paints out there, especially dark colors, you can um, roll out a wall and if you have a, if you get a scuff or you have to wash it in the middle of the wall, uh, they're almost impossible to touch up. Lighter colors uh, touch up a lot easier than darker colors, but um, this is a product that does touch up and touch up well. So spatter or splatter resistant, and this is a product that is splatter resistant. And, and what that means is when you're actually rolling the wall, you know, how much splatter do you get down on the ground? So we always use drop cloths and we always run um, nine inch paper along our baseboards and stuff like that. So we're catching any type of spatter or splatter. But as a professional painter, we don't like to make messes. We don't like to have splatter everywhere around, especially rolling ceilings up above us. You're getting paint falling down, you know, in your face, in your eyes. So having a paint that's splatter or spatter resistant is very nice. And I'll talk a little bit of, um, more in depth about that, my experience with it here um, down the road in the video. Antimicrobial additives into the paint. I want to just um, hit on that a little bit. If you've never heard that term or what that's about, though, this product has um, that additive in the paint. So it um, inhibits the growth of mold and mildew on the surface of the paint. So if you're using it in locker room areas, areas where there's a moisture or high humidity, you're not going to get the growth of mold and mildew on your surface if that's important to you. A lot of paints, interior paints, don't have those products in them. So if that's an important aspect it's good to know that scuffx actually has that additive in there gen x technology is something i've talked about a little bit um, um, in depth in other videos about um, that technology if you've never heard it you're going to see it on benjamin moore cans gen x technology is a colorant technology that benjamin moore has designed their own colorants specifically for their own paint so they don't use universal colorants and they took out a lot of universal chemicals that go into the colorants that degrade the quality of the paint or make the colors um, fade faster. And then they um, also are water-based uh, water based colorants that when you add those to the no, no VOC paints, the colorants don't have VOCs. And so you're not adding VOCs to the paint. So you still have a zero VOC paint. And it is their own colorants that hold their colors a lot better on interiors and on exteriors, darker colors that fade really fast with a lot of other competitors' paints out there. Gen X colorant technology, you know, helps those dark colors, you know, resist fading a lot faster. The Gen X, Gen X color technology also makes it very difficult for other paint companies to actually color match their paint. So if you choose a color off uh, Benjamin Moore fan deck and go to another paint color or paint company and ask them to color match it, it's going to be extremely difficult for them to color match the colors. So if you're choosing Benjamin Moore colors, you should actually have Benjamin Moore paint mixed up using um, their own colorants and Gen X technology. So a little bit about my you know experience with the paint and I, I showed you once again, I'll show you the color. It was a, a dark navy color right here and it was a dark navy color going over kind of a light blue wall. And you know, a lot of times you would think you know, it's probably uh, beneficial to undercoat that wall. We're gonna really put this uh, paint to the test and put it on there without a, an undercoat and see how it performs. Now, first off, I gotta say, as soon as we started rolling that dark uh, blue color on the wall it absolutely covered absolutely amazing i was extremely impressed with the the coverage of that dark blue going over a light blue wall it did only take actually two coats to cover it 100 percent. so i was extremely impressed with the coverage i did talk a little bit about splattering and for a color uh, that dark and having that much tint in it i would expect to have quite a bit of splattering you know on my tape and on my paper down on the floor and uh, by the end of the accent wall that we were done rolling, I was absolutely amazed. There was almost zero splatter, you know, on the floor. So extremely, uh, extremely impressed. So when Benjamin Moore claims that this is a spatter or splatter resistant uh, paint, that's definitely 100% true. And I was very impressed with its lack of spatter or splatter on the ground. I wasn't doing any rolling overhead. So I'm um, typically when you're rolling paints that splatter really bad, you feel it falling, you know, down on your face, which is very annoying you feel it getting in your eyes which is not good so um, I would be pretty confident if I was rolling that product you know overhead not having any splatter 
So not a point that uh, Benjamin Moore did have, you know, in their um, sales pitch of the product was easy application. Um, and, and part of that is one component product and, and well, all paints, most paints are one component. And I guess you could say they're all easy to apply, but this being, you know, a product that is designed to resist scuffing and not happen to be an epoxy being two component. Um, so a lot of products that we would compare it to uh, being scuff resistant, this is a product that is easier to apply. I'm gonna say the paint went on absolutely amazing, splatter resistant, covered very well, and it, it rolled out nicely, and it was easy to apply. It's easy to load up the roller, is easy to put on the wall. It, it seemed like the, the product was really thin when I opened up the can, and so I thought it was gonna be runny, and um, have a lot of splatter, but it did not. So the application process across the board um, when it comes to splatter resistant, um, its hangability, um, its coverage, the ability to hide you know, with a dark color over a lighter color, um, it was definitely 100% easy to apply. Another thing I want to talk about is um, quick dry. So Benjamin Moore's sell sheet said it, it, it is quick dry. And you know a lot of paint technology these days are quick dry paints. They dry extremely fast. This was a very dark color. So I would have expected um, at least an hour dry time or more, you know, to be able to recode it. And you know, one of the claims I was going through the sales sheets and they were saying ease of application, how you can get people back into the locker room in the the hotel rooms and dorm rooms and stuff extremely fast. Um, well, how do you do that? The paint has to dry quickly and it has to be scuff resistant and washable very quickly. And I gotta say, this paint dried extremely, extremely fast. I think we got done with our accent wall. By the time we were uh, to one end of the accent wall, we went to the other end of the accent wall and started rolling again because it was already dry. Now, quick dry times because could also run into problems if you're rolling and rolling too slow and you can actually start pulling on the paint and causing it to stipple and the paint was thin enough it dried in the right amount of time that it didn't cause that it gave us enough time to uh, put our product on you know in about a three foot section and then lay it out and then move on we were working two people on this accent wall i always highly recommend you know something especially like this to work in a two-man team to eliminate haloing so we applied one coat didn't touch our cut ends then we went back and and then did the cut-ins and as I was doing the cut-ins I had Luke following right behind me and filling in and doing um, the second coat and they were pulling our masking while our uh, tape um, in the paint was still wet so I'm gonna talk on another thing when it comes to the masking we were using frog tape on this project to get you know, perfectly straight lines and so I was a little bit worried about bleeding especially with a dark color like this because how thin it is it has a tendency to bleed under the tape a frog tape is um, one thing that's going to stop that it's going to give you perfectly straight lines but I wanted to really put frog tape to the test and this paint to the test and not actually caulk my tape and see how well it performed and I was absolutely amazed how well it performed and, and so just to you know touch on that we um, we applied our paint I actually did my cut-ins applied the paint with a brush you don't want to put a lot of pressure I put the paint you know on over the tape and we pulled it as the second coat um, came off and typically you know on something like this I would apply clear caulking you know over my tape then I would paint over it and then pull it to ensure that I get a perfectly straight lines I have some videos talking about that if you want to go back you know and watch my videos of caulking your tape and how you get perfectly straight lines I'm not going to talk about it in depth here but I did pull the tape on the sides and on the baseboards and it was amazing. The paint did not bleed through the tape. So the, the paint hit the, the frog tape, activated the frog tape, and I got perfectly straight lines without having to caulk. And so that eliminated one step. And I, and a lot of that is the frog tape, but the, I think some of it had to do with the paint also. So the paint's you know, ease of use, its lack of bleeding underneath the tape was um, absolutely phenomenal. I touched on a little bit before antimicrobial additives are added into this paint. So that's, that's really important if you're going to be using you know, this um, product. You can use it in bathrooms, high humidity bathrooms. You can use it in locker rooms. Um, a lot of times, even if you're down on the coast or you live in areas 
that are extremely humid, this would be a great product. Now I know it's they talk about the product in their sales sheets being used in um, high traffic areas, hotel rooms, door rooms, you know, hallways and stuff like that. But um, the, the product performed absolutely amazing, and um, I would be confident to use it in a bedroom. I mean, you know, if you have um, kids that are hockey players, that are lacrosse players, that are bouncing walls off or balls off the walls and stuff, and just are you know roughhousing kids. I mean, it's a great product for you know inside. Talk a little bit about um, you know the performance of the product from a professional standpoint. I mean, how well it hung. So a product like this, I would expect you know if I'm doing cut-ins, I try to do my cut-ins in one shot. You're never, you're always going to have to go back and do um, touch-ups. So there were you know some touch-ups along the cut-ins that I did have to do, and I'll touch up talk about its touch-up ability here in just just a minute. But the product hung amazing. There was no runs on the walls. Um, a product like this being extremely thin. You know, I would expect, you know, probably some runs or sags, but it hung well. So from a professional painter standpoint, you know, rolling and brushing it, um, Luke doesn't have as much as experience, you know, rolling and he did a fabulous job rolling it, didn't get any runs or sags. So I, I would give it a really high rating when it comes to its hangability. So talk a little bit about um, halos and touch-ups. So a product like this, I, I also would expect if you didn't get your wall laid out perfectly and you had to go back and touch something up somewhere along the line that you're gonna see right where you touched it up. And like I gotta say, the, the product, touches up amazing there was no no places where i went back and hit some um, light edge light touch-ups along the edges on the cut ends you couldn't see it when you stood back um, from the wall and different um lighting you couldn't see where you did any touch-ups is absolutely amazing another thing about this color um trying to eliminate halos and not get um what we call hat banding or haloing and that's going to be everywhere you do your cut ends or roll around a window, you would see where you did your cut ends or roll with a dark color. And one thing, um, cheap paints, um, are going to hail a worse than uh, more expensive paints and even a lot of expensive paints out there uh, halo when it comes to dark colors like this and you got to be very careful when it comes to your application process so um, to eliminate halos you got to do one coat on your wall and then you got to go back and do your cut-ins while your cut-ins are still wet you need to roll the wall and roll your field and roll as high up and down low as you can and next to all your cut-ins um, the, the, the larger your cut-ins are and the farther you stay away from them, the more likely you are going to get banding or haloing. But I got to say, you know, when this color dried out, you couldn't see any haloing at all. There was no form or signs of where we did our cut-ins on the tops, the bottoms, or the sides. And I was extremely impressed with that with the paint. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. That way you get notified every time I come out with a new product review. The subscribe button is one button you gotta push. If you don't hit the, the notification bell, you won't get notified every time we come out with a new video. It's free, simple, and easy to do. It's never costed a dime and it never will. You know, th one thing I wanna talk about is you know, a paint's washability. You know, um, when you start to step it up into um, higher end paints, they're gonna add more resins or more acrylic in the paint and those resins add more durability to the paint and make it more washable. But as you add more resin in the paint or acrylic, you're gonna go up in sheen. But when you're down into flats and mats trying to get a paint where you actually just scrub it once or twice with a wet rag and not have, you know, some of the paint on your rag what that is you're just pulling the paint right off the wall and that's a paint's you know inability to be scrubbable and uh paints are flat and matte paints are very notorious for that scrub x is a paint design and you can actually um, actually wipe and wash the walls and not leave marks um, scuffs or um, wash marks on there so um, that's pretty impressive that you can have a matte paint you know that's um, that is actually scrubbable so I want to talk a little bit about um, the price you know you know 
a lot of people are gonna say, well, how much did you pay for the paint? So I went down to um, a local paint store that sells Benjamin Moore products. I just walked in there as a contractor and just purchased um, some of the paint. And I purchased some in the past, but I just purchased some um, yesterday for this uh, project that we are working on. And I purchased one gallon to um, see what one gallon would cost. And it was $49 and some change. And, you know, that's, um, a price, the paint prices have gone up, you know, a lot because, um, you know, not just with this product, but just across the board because raw materials are really hard to find. Paint, uh, there's big paint shortages and stuff. It might date this video a little bit, but um, man, it's just, it's really difficult to get paint out there. $49 doesn't seem very expensive to me. It might seem um, maybe expensive to some people out there when I say the price, because yeah, you can go out there and buy uh, paint at some of your hardware stores and even some of your paint stores for you know $19 a gallon $20 a gallon and so you're going wow this is um, you know significantly more money but when it comes to paint you get what you pay for and um, if you want you know good paint if you want to have good results professional results you need to buy good paint and especially when it comes to a dark colors like this I touched on it like the haloing and banding it could be an absolute nightmare and very frustrating there was another um, paint manufacturer company I was doing a dark accent wall and I uh, did the wall two times over and I was still getting hat, hat banding or haloing and the customer was not happy with it and I had to um, redo the wall a third time using a different, went to a different paint company um, and um, in same color but just a different paint company and it was very frustrating. So choosing a good quality paint regardless of the price is going to save you time and money. So I'm just going to go over to the back of the can, give you some of the specs right off the back. It says, you know, use um, interior commercial and institutional high traffic um, environments. So it's what the product was designed for. It doesn't mean you can't use it for your bedroom or your house. Um, says for use on primed or previously painted interior drywall, masonry, a plaster, wood, or metal. So it, it can be used on a variety of surfaces. The coverage on this graphic, I get a lot of people, well, how much does it cover? It says it covers 300, 350 square feet to 400 square feet um, per gallon. And I gotta say, the coverage, um, I bought one gallon to do this accent wall and I didn't think it was a one gallon was going to be enough um, because I thought I was going to have to do um, probably at least three coats to two coats and one gallon coverage was absolutely amazing surface preparation um, I don't think there's anything unusual when it comes to the surface preparation when it comes to painting um, it's got Primer application, um, drying time. Drying time, it says one hour dry time. Um, recoat two to three hours. I gotta tell you, I mean, we got done with that accent wall. I mean, it must have been 30 minutes. We were on, on the other end and recoating it again. Had absolutely no problem. It dried significantly faster than an hour and we recoated it significantly quicker than the two to three hour um, coat time that it stated on the can. So the turnover time, you can get in, um, in and out of your project extremely fast. Cleanup is soap and water. So a lot of people will ask me, you know, what do you clean up with the product? It is a water-based um, product. So it just cleans up with soap and water. So ease of use and ease of cleanup is very simple. So one thing I uh, do want to talk about when it comes to the washability and stuff, it does state on the can, you know, um, that you do need to wait two weeks before you do any type of washing of the walls. So don't make the mistake of, you know, putting on a color like this or actually any product with ScuffX and um, go start scrubbing on the walls a week later because even though it says that it dries you know in an hour and and you can recode it in two to three hours like all paints all paints do cure you know over time so the chemicals inside these paints even though they feel dry to the touch these chemicals are still flashing off whether it's water whether it's alcohol formaldehyde whatever's in the paint they're flashing off over a period of time and they're continuing to bite to bond and cure to the surface so definitely um, make sure you adhere to what it says on the can do not attempt to wash or scrub your walls if you get any scuff marks on it for at least two weeks all right so now looking at the tds sheet i'm just going to go over a few things uh key points that i found on the tds sheet and um certifications it has two it has a lead 
four v4 uh, certification and it also has a chps certification if you're not familiar with those you can look those up but it does qualify for both of those the the solid content on this paint extremely high solid content so i was pretty impressed with that the solids is um 39 percent um, plus or minus 2%, which is really high solids. And that's probably uh, why it covered so well and why um, it was very splatter or spatter resistant. Another thing, just scrolling through the TDS um, uh, volatile um, VOCs on a volatile organic compounds. It's not a no VOC product, but um, VOCs, it's 82 grams per liter. If you wanted to know information like that, you know, VOC um, components. So, you know, if you're putting it, inside somebody's house that's concerned about VOCs, that information is available in the TDS. So there's other, there's dry times, there's viscosity, um, up there's um, recoat times, all kinds of information in there, but that's the technical, a few of the technical data sheet um, key points I wanted to bring up, you know, there that I just found on the product. All right, a couple of other things I wanted to, you know, talk about when it comes to the product itself and uh, that's odor. So, you know, a lot of paints these days, I don't know what it is, EPA regulations or what it is, um, but the odors, paints, uh, odors are very strong. I'm getting more sensitive as I get older and uh, the product, this product had almost zero odor to it. I don't know if it's intentional, but I was extremely impressed with the low odor and we're using it inside a business. So, you know, that, that could be an issue if you're using it, you know, in locker rooms, if you're using it in hotels, if you're using it in conference rooms, stuff like that, where it's recommended, there could be a lot of people around and the smell of paint, um, the day you're using it, or even the next day as it dries and cures could actually be an issue. Very impressed with the, to me, no to low odor of it. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about, a little bit about my uh, not so scientific adhesion test and you know how well does a product uh, adhere. And once again, you know, uh, you've probably heard this in some of my videos before, if the product sticks to my skin, and when I go home at the end of the day and take a shower and I can't even get it off my skin, you know, I think I got fairly good confidence it's actually gonna stick to the surface that, you know, we're applying it to a painted surface that's in good sound condition. Now, you know, I got that blue paint on me, got home and it was one of the hardest products that I've ever had to scrub off. It, it acted, I actually had, because we were painting a 2K poly, you know, the same day and I had some black 2K poly on my hands and I had some scuff X on my hands and, Oh my gosh, it would not come off. I had a scrub with a nylon, you know, um, bristle brush to get that, that scuff X off my hands. It was on there pretty dang good. So I'm pretty impressed with, you know, how well it adhered to at least my skin. So I'm pretty confident that it's going to adhere to a wall. I know once again, this is a, not a very scientific test, but it's kind of, you know, one of my tests that I use. I mean, cheap paints that we've had uh, problems down the road with it adhering, whether it, you know, it was enamel on trim or a wall paint. Um, those paints typically when we get, I'd get it on my hand or I'd get on my skin, just with a little bit of water, they would just typically typically wash off and um, we would see down the road adhesion problems with those products. So um, it did pass my not, not so scientific adhesion test. So I do also want to touch on, um, you know, uh, how you can actually apply the product. So reading on the back of the can, it does say you can brush, roll and spray. Now I um, typically always roll my walls. It's very rare that I would spray the walls, but it does say you could actually spray the products. I don't have any, um, any experience spraying scuff X, uh, anytime I would apply it, you know, I'm only going to uh, brush and roll it when it comes to rolling on finishes. I believe you get a better finish when it comes to rolling your walls, uh, when it comes to spraying, um, speed of application, you can get it on faster. If you're doing, you know, products like a new construction, um, if you're using this product in, to do dorm rooms or you're doing apartments and stuff like that, you definitely can spray it. Now, um, it, it doesn't give any recommendations on tip size. I can't give any recommendations that way, but um, I did brush and roll it in a brushed and rolled, absolutely amazing. Also want to talk a little bit about the finish. It was a matte finish. When I got this dark color done, the, the finish itself across the board, I had a nice even color all the way across the board. Didn't have any um, lap marks streaking at all when it comes to dark colors like that. It's really hard to not get lap marks or streaking or tint float or problems, you know, with the color being even across the board. Um, this, the, the color looked absolutely amazing across the board and the 
the matte finish looked really, really nice. The, the matte finish, I was really impressed with the final finish of the product itself and how the wall looked. We'll give you a look at that, what it actually looked on the accent wall that we were doing with this dark color. All right, now for the verdict. Is this a product that you know I would recommend you buying or is this a product that I would actually use? So uh, across the board, I gotta say ScuffX is an absolute amazing product. Um, there's not a lot I have to say or anything I have to say negative about it. This is definitely a product I'm gonna use you know, in the future. Anytime I've got a dark color like this, um, any type of dark, dark color or anytime I'm gonna be concerned about haloing, this would end up being my go-to paint. I don't think I've ever had a Paint ever perform as well as this paint does when it comes to a dark color. Um, highly recommend it. Um, it was a matte finish. Um, the finish itself, I absolutely uh, love the look of the finish. It looked um, absolutely amazing. From a professional painter standpoint, across the board, it performed extremely well. Now, I don't have any experience spraying it. I'm not sure how well it sprays. I'm not even sure if it recommends spraying. I'll look on the can, but um, it rolled and brushed absolutely amazing. So so where would I put this product, you know, on our ladder now? That's the, the ladder test, you know. This is a product that is uh, absolutely amazing. I would highly recommend it. I think the price um, for the product that it is, I think it's a... a absolute bargain it's probably going to be one of my uh, go-to everyday paints and this is going to make it up on the top rung of our ladder right here so this is um a top tier product that i would highly recommend from benjamin moore like benjamin moore they make a lot of amazing products i'm pretty impressed with you know, a lot of the products that i have uh reviewed from this um, company um great products uh great paint scuff x see you next time right here on paint life tv if you haven't subscribed to our channel hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell that way you get notified every time i come out with a new review or a product or tool review if you've got a product you want to see me review just leave it down in the comment section below if you have any questions or comments about this product leave it down in the comment section below and like we always say we'll see you next time Ow. No. You want to give your opinion? What do you think? Yes or no? That's a yes? Or no? Okay. One for yes. <laughs> Two for no. <laughs> okay, yes. She likes it. <laughs> you want to roll tape?